Hey guys, and welcome to another JavaScript practice problems for complete beginners. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to write a custom array filter method. So the problem is, if you have an array of students and each one has a different age, how do you filter out to grab only the students who are greater than the age of, let's say, 20? All right, so let's go ahead and break it down on the whiteboard. So let's go ahead and declare an array that has a couple of entities in it in which I'll say the value of this array will be the age of each student. So if you imagine we have an array of different values in it, and then for each uh, uh, index in this array, we have a specific value which will represent the age of the student. So 10, 20, 21, and then 23. So if we were to try to grab or filter out the ages that are greater than or equal to 20, Logically, what we do again is loop through starting at index 0. We look here and see is this greater than or equal to 20? If it is, we need to add it to something, otherwise, we just move on. So, in this case, we're just going to move on to index 1. And then again, we say is 20 greater than or equal to um, 20? And it is. So, in this case, what we need to do is declare a new array and put the value of that inside the array. So we can do that, you know, new array in JavaScript and push the value if you want to. And then when we've done that, we can move on to the next slot. Is 21 greater than or equal to 20? Yes, so we go ahead and push that onto the new array. Again, is 23 greater than or equal to 20? It is, so we push 23 onto this new array. And then what we want to do is return this new array outside of the function. So if you imagine this whole thing is a function, this would be your return statement. This would be your new array that you declare up here, which is just a blank array. And then you're just going to push objects onto this every time you find something that's greater than or equal to 20. So that's how you do a custom filter. And there's other JavaScript methods that do us to do filtering for us. But that's pretty much the logic between, behind how you take an array and filter out based on some Boolean expression. So let's go ahead and look at how you implement that in JavaScript. So it turns out the whole concept of filtering out specific entities that match a Boolean happens often in programming. So you want to know how to actually implement, you know, the low level filtering mechanics versus, before you start using pre-built options such as the EX6 filter that's attached to the array prototype. So to start off, let's go ahead and write a filter which just basically filters over a hard-coded property such as age. So like an example, I'm going to go ahead and paste in an array of students where we have four different students that we can start filtering on. And what we need to do after this is we need to declare that function which can be used for filtering out students. So I'll go ahead and say function filter students by age, which is going to take a students array as an argument and then finally an age as what we need to filter on. And then like in the example, we have to have a kind of a staging area or a place to put these filtered students into. So what we need to do is say const new array is equal to a blank array. And then we can just go ahead and return that from our function. And then the second part of the whole filtering aspect is we need to loop through each student one by one. So we can say for let student of students, which is going to just grab us one by one each student object. And then we can say if student.age is greater than or equal to age, and in fact I notice I spelled r instead of age, so I'll fix that. We need to just push that student into our new array. And then finally down here we can call that. So I'll say filter students by age, call it with our students, and then call it with the age of 20. So hopefully that makes sense, right? Again, we just declare a new array. We loop through the old array. For every object that passes our filter, we push it to the new array, and then finally we return that new array. And then down here, after I run it, we can see that it returns three entities, all of which pass our filter, which is defined on line 19. All right, so that's pretty cool. We have a filter, but it's kind of hard-coded to filter on age. So instead, what if we wanted to be able to dynamically filter based on some type of callback function? So what we could do is instead of passing an age, we can pass in a callback function, which we can use here. So if the callback function is true, 
we then do the same logic. We push the student into a new array, and then we return the new array to the colleague of the function. And then we're going to rename the students to, instead of filter students by age, we can just name it filter students. And then the last part of this changing is we need to, instead of passing in 20 here, we need to pass it in an anonymous callback function. Make sure my parentheses all line up. It seems like they do. And then inside this anonymous callback function, we need to return a Boolean expression. So here we can say return student.age greater than or equal to 20. So again, we run the function and it returns the exact same output as it did before. And this allows us to write more custom filters so we can easily change the filter and do whatever we want by just changing it like in one place instead of it being hard coded inside of our actual, actual filter. Cool, so we learned how to write a custom filter with a hard coded property that we're checking. We learned how to write a dynamic filter where we pass a callback to change the Boolean expression which is evaluated. Now, the last thing I should mention is this whole filter construct or method is already built into the JavaScript array prototype. So instead of having to call filter students, I can actually get rid of this completely. Then down here, I can go ahead and get rid of that. And then what we can do is on any type of array in JavaScript, you can actually call a filter method, which is going to take an anonymous callback function very similar to what we just did like five seconds ago. And then it's going to return every student inside of a new array which passes your callback. So save this and then run this. Let me change that to equal to so it matches what we did before. And again, notice that it returns those same three students like we did in the first example. So again, before you start actually using some of these helper functions in JavaScript or ES6, make sure you understand the implementation, especially if you're new to programming, because these little helper functions, like they're kind of good brain teasers and brain testers to make sure you understand the underlying logic of what's happening behind the scenes. So that wraps up the whole, how do you solve the filter problem in JavaScript? Be sure to like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for videos in the future. All right, thanks for watching.